And so, yeah, how can we keep, um, you know, taking seriously the art of revolution in the in a literal sense, right? I'll just end it there. Um, and our first uh, performer is going to be um, Damon. I thought what I'd do to kind of tighten it up slightly is just announce two people at a time. Uh, so the first two readers, presenters will be Damon Williams and Kim Shuck, who's the seventh San Francisco Poet Laureate. Well, well, I appreciate this, Adam. Thank you for all that you just said and even made me remember things that I wasn't even like thinking about off the top of my head or remembering. So I just really appreciate that. And yeah, Adam has just been a friend and comrade even before this stuff. And so like, it's just exciting to, you know, stay connected and, you know, they are who in invited me here. So I'm, I'm grateful. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do this. I'm gonna let Adam slash Richard kind of time check because uh, I wasn't sure exactly how much time I, I need to do. So I have a piece and then I can do a second one if there's time for it. And if it feels like we should move on, I feel like it will also be sufficient and enough. So y'all tell me and, I, and I'm down either way. I think around five minutes. Five minutes, all right, we'll, we'll all right. Cool. I'll see where I'm at if 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 I need to feel that. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm gonna um begin and end this with some refrains. And if we weren't on Zoom and if I could feel your your breath and we were in a place together, we would do a call and response. But I don't know if y'all have ever tried to do a call and response on Zoom. It is utter chaos. So just imagine the feel of like, oh, I'm these things that sound melodic, I'm gonna say I'm with them, but you, you just just receive them. And you say, we gonna make a new world. Let me hear you say, we gonna make a new world. Let me hear you say, we gonna make a new world. We gonna make a new world. We gonna make a new world. You say, we won't do what we have been told. We can't take this anymore. Swear this shit is getting old. We gonna make a new world. We can't take it. We can't take it. We can't take it. We can't take. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. We gonna make. This the one right here. We gonna take it. We gonna take it. We gonna take it. We gonna take. We can make it. We can make it. Look at all that we can make. Welcome to the journey to freedom. Those before us left lessons. We gonna learn and repeat them. We not gonna follow directions because we know that they cheating. The game has been rigged, but into the coding, you'll beat it. And if star ain't the brightest, it's the one that you're seeing. Just follow your spirits, because you was born with the secrets. We gonna find what we seeking. Hearts gonna keep beating. Every day is the party. It don't just start on the weekend. We going harder than cement marching, discarding our demons, bombarding the garden led by the daughters of Eden. We are all that we needed, clever and never defeated. We do it better together. They want us broken, competing. We defining this moment and giving life a new meaning. We defying the owners, open and bold with our treason. Kids are smoking and drinking cause we be coping with trauma, drama, mama fussing, cussing and little cousins be bleeding. All the homies be tweaking, getting locked up for no reason. Hunting us all year, we not just cuffed in the season, catching feelings, healing, but still throwing shade in the evening. If you saw the impossible, would that make you believe it? Boarding up our schools, they still don't want us reading. Trying to shut us up, cause they don't want us screaming. Oh, we done woke up now. We're showing them what we've been dreaming. Oh, they got us fucked up. But here come the redeeming. Now stop. Move to the beat of my drum. Who can you feed with a crumb? And what can you grow with a seed? Body don't burn in the sun. Build it up and then they'll come. Can't freely have fun with your funds. We know that freedom ain't free. We need role models and teachers for this world swallowing eaters. But it's hard to know who to follow when everyone around you's a leader. Do it for Darian and Adia. 
Dame Mo and Rakia. We'll fix it or break it down, but one way or another, they'll see us. What happened when bullshit's abolished? Well, hustles put kids through college. We learn money can't fix every problem, or we don't need their schools to get knowledge. And we still grind for them dollars. Ain't no leash or tie on my collar. The stories revise, we write in the lies. Don't rock or roll, but we got honor. Mm. Rock and roll, no Madonna. No Rolling Stones, no Nirvana. I'm Chuck Bevy, and I'm Bevy White, and I'm very tight with my mama. And I got every right to go crazy. Them scary nights is what made me, but still I rise to steal the prize. You be ill advised to try to play me. Now let me hear you say, let my people go. Set my people free. I'm letting my people know. I love you like you and me. Say it with me there. Let me hear you say, let my people go. Set my people free. Set people. I'm letting my people know. I love you like you and me. Look at somebody. Say, I love you like you and me. Give them a little comment. Yeah, I love you like you and me. Throw a little heart reaction. I love you like you and me. One more time. Yeah, I love you like you and me. Ashe, my name is Damon Williams. I appreciate y'all. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Kim, Kim Shuck. Hi. Wow. So my set has changed four times in the last three minutes. <laughs> Damon, you've made me want to go right. It's the best compliment I can give anybody. I just did the looking for my glasses when they were on my head thing. All right, this one, because it came up in the last section. Parent and child cycle. When the first pain hit, I went up on my toes. Birth dances you. And all of those people that will breathe with you, speaking only for myself, they were exactly no help. My son and I, we did that dance together, became two people. It's a different kind of storytelling. Two, we took the stereotypes in our hands and tore them up. The worlds we've created between us, parent and child, human and human. You curled there and whispered stories of healing into my fever dreams. We have adventured. Three, Cleaning grandpa's desk, we found Mary of Shestahova, her black skin rendered in silver metal. Isis, by any other name, still brought her lover back from the dead and claimed a son from him. Isis of sky and wisdom wrapped in blue as I have been, just feeling the heartbeat, the damp skin, the wonder of a new person. Four. We carefully mark the places where the world changes, pack our borders, our toothbrushes, walking shoes, rewritten in every watershed, every story shed, children of corn walking north. The sons of corn perform the magic as they were taught and the people were fed. We are dusted with pollen. We are walking north. Five. The child at school showed me the mark of the scorpion on his leg. I showed him the mark of the spider on mine. We've walked dangerous miles, he and I, separate parts of the same story. The gods took a handful of corn flour, some blood, and we are born, danced, went up on our toes. You may have been born differently, but this is our story. Six, children in cages, this prayer, and genetic memory offers panic. Stolen children, the sacred geometry shattered. We carry our borders, we who are blood and corn. We reach across rivers. We call to our cousins. We burn the copal. Seven, this part of the poem isn't written yet. We're gonna have to write it together. When you write, or when I write a poem specific to a situation, I hope it goes stale, and I really hope that one eventually goes stale. 
And then I will leave you with this called Thieves. We who steal ourselves back from songs and laws and habits that claim us and everything about us, the long men, the wide hip, generous bay as protective as any mother. We who can still hear Lovejoy's press, can hear it from under the water, the supervisory singing wolves, we who sing to other songs, we steal ourselves back, the kidnapped and hostage, the unransomed, the unransomable. We learn songs to pick locks, to absorb your laws and habits. We are coming for ourselves. We're on our way. And to answer a question that somebody else was asked, what is the purpose of art? The translation is a very big part of it, but I remember um, when, um, when I was a child and people thought my native dad was not attractive and we have changed things by showing ourselves through our artwork, either verbal or painted or however they happen. So we have a purpose. Thank you for having me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Damon. Thank you, Kim. Our next two presenters will be Marielle Setsu, poet and cultural activist from Italy, and Linda Gowen, poet from Kentucky. Mariella? Okay, yes, I managed. I was uh, <clears throat> uh, unmuting my device. So, um, oh no, sorry. Uh, okay. Right, it will be <clears throat> a short reading. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. The sun arises in the east. Uh, the sun arises in the east, but it ain't necessarily clothed in robes of blood and gold. Stop my son from waging war, cry the eve of peace. Turn your heart to thoughts of east. I was brought up in a town that had been left to a heap of ruins by the angels of World War II. And they said, not anymore. And we said, no more war, please. No more destruction of innocent lives. And it was written in constitutions, but now in blatant contradiction, the present time is dragged to its destruction. Clouds and clouds above our sky, and they drop tears of war again. <clears throat> what sky have you been, my little black cloud? What sky have you seen from your cold, humid shroud? I've been in a light gray sky where soldiers fight against their image reflected on mirrors. <laughs> I've seen, in a, I've seen a world full of mirrors and a world full of weapons. I've seen people displaced and government roaring. I've seen people forever walking to find a new place to live. I've seen people drowning to fulfill a single dream. I've seen castaways stepping into my town and survivor naked in front of a judge with cone. I've seen people knocking at your door, my friend, knocking at everybody's door with perishable hand. <clears throat> yes. Linda? Can you hear me? Am I hearable? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Lou, thank you for asking me. Um, you were right. I showed up and I feel better. So thank you. Um, I have two short ones. A minor dispute. We should worship water, he said, because we are just that. But then she said we were light and that's where we need to focus. Therein lies the conflict where we toss hair dryers into tubs filled with liquids or thrust damp knives into sockets or stalk widow's walks with open umbrellas as we defy lightning. We are that blinding rip in the clouds. We are those weightless slim veins that waver at the highest points that energy seeks a way to be grounded. 
And we are that water. We are that weighted essence of movement that counters dry spells, the fluidity that allows us to be all we can be, despite rigidity. Maybe you're right, she said. We should worship water. He responded, maybe you're right, because nothing else matters but light. And some say evolution. If you're not in the room when decisions are hatched and those newborn choices are about you, then you've missed a means to alter your genes so you can survive. Some call it evolution, but the alterations occur so quickly, much too fast to be toying with a word that means the dinosaurs died, like all of them, we thought. These days, many of us are shedding scales faster than a roadrunner runs. The clarity that comes from such change is blinding. The vulnerability pushes us to hide under lumpy blankets so no one can find us. The anger generated from the fact that nature reshaped dinosaurs into politicians generated steam, which could be useful if someone could harness said steam. The only way to move forward in this land filled with disruptive volcanoes, intentional meteors, real automatic weapons, and vegetables that rot in the land of plenty marketplace is to use stealth. Move under those lumpy blankets until you bump into other lumpy blankets. Once you build a chorus of lumpy blankets, then sing your hearts out. The notes are not that important. Remember your words because you'll need them. Remember your physics and pull back to push. Remember your heart and let it guide you because your heart is stronger than you know. A conspiracy is on wheels turning backwards. The truth moves forward, sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly, dependent entirely on our cooperation, on our adaptation, on our evolution on our being in that room when decisions are made about us. All right, thank you, Mariella and Linda. Our next two presenters will be Bruce Isaacson, poet and publisher of Zeitgeist Books, and Andrea Change, poet and executive director of the Guild Complex from Chicago. Bruce. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I just have this one, this one poem and, uh, you know, the world of marketing and selling is flipping everywhere. It's so pushy these days. And, um, and this is about, this is about that. It's called <clears throat> what you eat. An advertising slogan from the seventies stored 30 years in her psyche, now recited to our daughter over breakfast. What you eatin', nothing, honey, or a jingo for an insurance company out of business a decade ago. Family-wide gets on your side, or as I settle into age, like hopes settle into comfort, she blurts as I enter the room, where's the beef? or any of a hundred empty boxes, spoon fed to our daughter's psyche, the sayings of companies that don't want to pay health care for workers whose two buses, two jobs, full time, plus food stamps to make ends meet. The wizards of finance and warlocks of bonus bucks, what do they say for themselves? You're in good hands with Joe Camel. I'd like to teach the world to sing stress, poverty, illness, old age. It's the real thing. And with equality for all, the multi-ethnic knock of opportunity, yo quiero taco bell. The cute little dog will be chopped for burrito, prepped, pounded, permafrosted into your psyche. A lifetime of labor teaches that we are the little dog. We are the ones who killed Cherub Dylan and the ones who, the one who was killed too. Timor Mortis conturbat me. 
Even the worst of Whitman is better, I say, with responde. Let those who sleep be waked. I pronounce openly for a new distribution of roles. Remember your own sacred heart. As protest, only a bubble in the molten mass pops and sighs out and the mass hardens. Remember your heart, yourself. You who once pulled beauty on the knee. Remember, we are not our skin of grime. I close my mind to him, the almighty power hurled, headlong flaming from the ethereal sky with hideous ruin and combustion down to bottomless perdition. Let us instead bear our brains to heaven. Let us close the mind to Moloch. I would close my mind to the sellers of soap because I must buy soap. He may have my money, but not my mind. He may wash my daughter, but steer clear of her pure, pure psyche. Get thee behind me, imprint thyself not, you mixer of metaphors with mammon. Let us hear the great voice of poets unfurled. Let that caged bird sing, back Satan, back. I cannot stop you in this world, and yes, I am angry at the sun, for I cannot stop bills for home, hearth, health care, heartless mix of my mind in the mirror of mammon. I have given myself over to tuition, time payment plans, yet there is a line, a line you shall not cross. It is the door to the dreams of my daughter. No, no pasaran. Stay out of her seven-year-old psyche, bub. You shall not pass. Thank you for having me join you. Andrea? Hey, all. I apologize. My uh, webcam is suddenly acting funky. So you have an image of me, but if I turn it on, you'll see a black space. So. Um, I want to apologize for that, um, but thank you for inviting me to this. I've enjoyed um, hearing folks and um, all the positive things um, that people said, especially, um, I think it was Kim that was talking earlier about workers and the waitresses in Las Vegas and some of the things that people face. And I was watching the news about flight attendants and how they've had to deal with these, I think, a thousand percent increase in unruly passengers and we take those folks, those service folks for granted. Um, and and <clears throat> when we talk about workers um, and the term essential has sort of gone away, but we forget about the humanity of those folks. Um, and as I was trying to sort of craft something for this, um, the Statue of Liberty poem sort of came to mind and as I was doing some research on it, I came upon some, uh, some information, an article from The Atlantic from 2018 by Walt Hunter, who's an associate uh, lit professor at Clemson. And he talks about uh, Emma Lazarus. She was a person who wrote the sonnet that's um, often quoted from the Statue of Liberty. And he says that it's a Petrachian sonnet th that's an awkward vehicle for a defense of American greatness, perhaps because so many of those who quote it miss its true meaning. And in the article, he sort of goes on to sort of describe and talk about the piece, um, specifically the line 10 and 11 that most of us are familiar with, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Um, the Those lines sort of, from Lazarus' perspective, was meant to offer a more humanitarian vision for America as, instead of, uh, it's used sort of in the to sort of as a, a shield against the current racist rhetoric that steers much of our politics today. Um, but in the article, he references a poet, um, a Palestinian female poet, photographer, and activist from Nazareth. Her name is Doreen Tatour. And um, I thought instead of me providing something that was rushed and inadequate, that I would read this piece because it spoke to me. Um, it spoke to some of the conversation about the most recent election and how um, women in droves voted to 
to protect our rights. And um, so this piece, again, not my own, is A Female Cry by Doreen Tatour. Oh, my life nestled in the heart of paper. Look here, our sorrows have slammed shut the door of hope. Their ghosts embracing our color until we appear like them, the ink in poems of worry. Look at them, how they sink their teeth in my side, wolfing down my blossoms and sweet scents. They killed my spring in its entirety, stole my very life from the world, unleashed the season of sleepiness. Oh, my life, I have grown tired. Let me depart to live out my life, secluded forever in the silence of my land. Let me, for I cannot overpower them, charged as they are by the rays of daylight and twilight alike. My chains won't be broken by you, O oh fate. While the trees of my oppression go unwatered by hope, I will go on living by withdrawing inwards, I feed off the fires of time and burn up so long as I am imprisoned by silence, so long as I am occupied by sadness. How long have I lived on the ground of hope, beset by the flowers of life? I water them from the spring of struggle, raise them up through the resolve of youth. I play, sing for existence itself, look forward to the birth of peace. I reveal every light within my eyes, yet these sorrow, O oh life of mine, follow me like my own name in the heart of this place, like echoes. O oh, my silent letters in the drowning sea, let me struggle on in nothingness, alone with these sorrows, with tears of regret. I will always be inhabited by pain as long as I accept being silenced. O oh, my dream, kidnapped from my younger years, silence has ravaged us. Our tears have become as a sea. Our patience has bored of us. Together, we rise up for sure. Whatever it was we wanted to be. So let's go. Raise up a cry in the face of those shadowy ghosts. For how long, oh fire within, will you scorch my breasts with tears? And how long, oh scream, will you remain? in the hearts of women. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bruce and Andrea. Our next two presenters will be Paloma Carroll, a visual artist from Chicago, and Rodney Lee, a poet from Las Vegas. Woo, Paloma. Paloma. Woo. Go, Paloma, go. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen so you can see my art piece. Okay, so this is my art piece. Um, can everyone see it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Or, okay. All right. Yes. Beautiful bottom. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so this piece focuses on queer liberation from the perspective of honoring and changing tradition, specifically that of religion and indigeneity. The subject is La Guadalupana, or the indigenous Mexican version of the Virgin Mary, also known as Our Lady of Guadalupe. Around the Virgin is a representation of the intersectional pride flag, which is to honor the LGBTQ community, which have been historically rejected from the Catholic Church, which is very embedded in Mexican culture. Um, the image of corn is in reference to the great importance of corn in indigenous Mexican culture. The Daguan Lupana is also holding a heart in reference to the human sacrifice of the Aztecs. This is to honor that we cannot forget our past and that all of the suffering of our ancestors and that we must remember all of the suffering of our ancestors when we strive to make change today. So yeah, um, that's my piece. That's what I had to say about it. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Are you going to share the other one? Uh, which other one? The one with the finger, dude. Oh, I, so sorry, I'm biased. I, I, I've seen I, her. I lost her. that file. What the shit? 
She's got. The, <laughs> I'm sorry, Paloma's one of my students. She's just amazing. She's got one with the middle finger. But maybe talk about that. What was that about? Uh, yeah. So the original. Can I see screen sharing? I'll stop sharing. There we go. Um. So the original file was, uh, the original drawing was La Guadalupana <laughs> flipping off the uh, the viewer. And it's basically, it was also about kind of my anger at the church and personal religious trauma around being LGBTQ and not accepted by the church and kind of trying to reclaim my relationship with with my religion and, and my relationship with, um, La Guadalupana and like, you know, kind of being able to take ownership of that and not allow other people to allow to tell me like what um, what to believe and what uh, who I should be. So yeah. Can you show one more? Uh, yeah, the Black Lives Matter one. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Is. I oh, put, your, put your Insta handle. You got to follow her on Insta. Oh, She's yeah. Um, I'll put my Instagram. Handle. Really? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Rodney. Rodney Lee. Okay, I guess Rodney's not here. No, looks like, it looks like he. I know he was here, but it looks like he's not here now. Okay, so we're going to end with three people from um, Chicago: Nicholas Thompson, a poet; Diana Zwinak, a poet and arts administrator; and some guy named Lou Rosenbaum, who I've never heard of in my life. So, Nicholas, go ahead. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, I have two pieces that I'm going to share. Uh, one I wrote like actually last night, so it was fresh produce. And the other one I wrote on my trip. I can't, I went to West Africa for like a month and I came back and I wrote it. So this is the first one. It's untitled Pending Revolution. A love letter to revolutionaries, rebel, rebels, radicals, renegades, rebel rousers, and rancors toward a vision of a future struggling to be born. Humanity will stop for no man's privilege. I'm early morning reading hood communists and drinking matcha on the porch, onlooking the community garden where the children play safely. Miro's decorated in liberatory illustrations. The catchphrase is everyone always from each according to ability to each according to need. Down with the imperialism of Black Alliance for Peace. I pull up to the district assembly discussing city allocations and the preservation of the trees. Everybody heard, everybody speaks. Onward ever, backward never, we delivering groceries to the senior co-op. I receive around the chest with an elder picking up game and some recipes. They share it with me. The revolution was a process, not an end goal or a thing, but emotion and always becoming. The struggle continues. Child care is collective, a well-being for all with the platform. Pigs wasn't welcome on the block. Safety was bonds with each other. I'm at the community center volunteering time, pondering if Huey read the Stoics, wondering a world in which Malcolm lives to see Burkina Faso under Sankara. I'm prepping my notes for the book club tonight. It's blood in my eye, hoping to do George Jackson justice. I'm strolling through the neighborhood. I stop in on a corner cooperative in a hoodie and a do-rag. This is the spot where we plant the coup at. We can even with a couple convicts turned comrade. I'm checking in on my folks, walking down the street where the people were in control, no cop cars on patrol. We quicker to a vote than the vote, and they know that. Blacks, brown, babies, no more in blue, journey to grace and mint in amusement, riding bikes, flexing and frolicking, hooping, ain't no active shooters, only active imaginations, take them on an adventure, prepping for their next stage of life, unbothered, blurring boisterous music, playing a dozen, sleeping serenely if they want to, praising the gospel, ghetto or otherwise, eating rainbows and sipping dollar sweet teas, not playing with pistols, this ain't even a utopia, but we got sense enough to know that life can't be refunded. I walk in a classroom where I mentor, Today, teens meditating, hearing the history of the indigenous the inmate and the immigrant, practicing conflict resolution. They got options for electives like cultivation, world building, writing people's constitutions, hearing voices, seeing visions toward a transformed future. History don't repeat, but it rhymes and the rhythm hinders movement. But if people's core sings, why they on the moon again? Why they on the moon again? Why they on the moon again? And we sent them there on a one-way flight. Do not return center the revolution wasn't televised. It was streamed, streamlined and made a TikTok challenge overthrow a boss today, form an organization or a party and dance a freedom jig and two step towards liberation. Protests of progressive only seeking health care. Tell them they way too passive. I'm sorry, my people keep weapons and need action. We're not kneeling with no enemies, no infatuation with violence, but our emancipation and sovereignty inseparable from it. 
Hashtag. First day after victory, we secured the bread for the masses. We acknowledged the land by returning it to the stewards and found equity when we emptied the fucking penitentiaries. We slid on a ruling class, took the power from the slightest scale. Strikes had us thinking of the worker and not drones. Strikes had us thinking of the worker and not drones. I organized that as the revolution tomorrow, but prepared to work without ever seeing the fruits of my labor because this is for posterity, not the Amiri. The struggle wasn't born in a vacuum and ideas do not fall from the sky. The social context got us here. We put an end to culture wars and woman planets, stolen wages, increasing panic. We build in towards mutual aid and dual power. No one being can write all of humanity. That's the people's post and the capital was a catapult. Was it no more foundations built on the backs of the exploited? No philanthropy or charity. We redistributed the needs from the source. Relations to the property was made obsolete. We in a moment post-revolution where I can practice veganism and pacifism and peace where the social conditions can allow for the free association, forming unions with Asada's daughters and sons of Malcolm and the free children, free children. Democracy died with the price tags and war prison-based economies got millions into suffering. White supremacists and fascists choked them out with their white hoods and bootstraps. If this is too graphic, a vivid illustration of a world emerging, you ain't built for this. The violence to slave applies contrary from the slave master. I saw self-determination in the fire of that municipal building. Ironic, it's a community kitchen and a warming center now. Communing with my ancestors, wanting to commute to late stage intercommunalism, learning anti-colonial struggles for nation building from the continent and resistance and resilience from the Caribbean. No more prayers, but payments for Haiti. We had a conference off the coast. My people, herbalists and animists, one with earth and phenomena, movers and shakers, druids and shamans, scientists and griots and singers of the freedom songs. Flashback to the encampment. We made it enchanted with nooks and crannies, had systems of accountability and even light and running water. Out in the woods, way more civilized than the so-called liberal democracy that deprive us and is a foundation of fascism and, and enables these neo-confederates. Our zone was liberated. Now them safe folks build a commune radically inclusive. I spent my weekends there at the open mics. We democratized society and socialized production, built people centered human rights from struggle. It countered to the myth of enlightenment, a world where everything produced ethically. The community provided all necessity. Wasn't any working class slave or peasantry. It was theory and the practice, required strategy and tactics. We have a luxury, no luxury of time nor academic disputes or battling tendencies or Western chauvinism. Our victory is synonymous with unity. I pen this letter to revolutionaries, rebels, radicals, renegades, rabble rousing the rank of tours. The struggle is ours and a world dying to be born. What you gonna do? No compromise, no retreat. <clears throat> and then I'll be Damn, quick. that was powerful. Love that. I appreciate that. I'll be quick. This one's much shorter. This one I wrote on uh, my way back from, uh, I was from in Liberia, Mali, and Ghana. Love, liberation, embrace, veneration. I'm after abolition, wages, classes, and the prison. Worker from a peasant, can you tell me what's the difference? For the autonomous, freely liberated, cognizant, the pit the people piling in is bottomless. They pit the people against one another over documents and providence to maintain the dominance. Took away the commons and they took away our common sense and empty out our pockets for their products for the, till we out of sense. You trying to buy some happiness, another day, another dollar short. It didn't fill the void. Tell me what you brought it for. Groom took a soon to the tune, selling us dreams that's American before all the immigrants. We ain't had the room. They say we got some terrorists, but they always been among us. They wearing white hoods and they hung us. Now they got the badges and they in Congress. They calling me the notorious Negro agitator, rabble rouser, rancator. I like a fuffle with these unwitting collaborators, colonizers, terror more. Death wishes shooting stars while the terror forms. Supernova dying cosmos as the planet warms to a cold of corn. And this is called an arm. They say to love them when they do us harm. Never proud to be the privilege of American. Refuse to bask in luxuries and suffering of other men when opulence and counterfeit and stolen from the motherland. Ain't been home in centuries, but greeted me as African. Locals told me, welcome home. We glad to see you back again. I'm in Liberia. We discussing politics with a climate much better for my melanin and sinuses. I'm eating topic geek cassava leaves. Low key remind me of my daddy collard greens. RIP. Stomach full, belly last, kicking back, feeling closer to my roots and my family tree. And I pause for a moment. Is this free? I ain't seen a settler or colonizer in some weeks, but I'm pondering the plundering of the content of the continent that's southern. Centuries of pillaging, people minerals as a hobby. They overthrew Nkrumah, then they overthrew Gaddafi. Now look at Libya and look at Mali, Ghana and the Ivory Coast. They're getting robbed for their cocoa. The Congo getting looted for its cobalt. The villages are lacking in the water and got no roads. So every protest in the U.S. when you see it's looting, just know we're taking back what you stole, though. The rich is never enriching the people. Only overseas of the pocket overseers, and they dare to call this freedom. Yeah, y'all starving, but you can vote. What a natural where your land and your labor feed the globe. The anti-blackness so unusual. My people strength something beautiful. The rural here remind me of the ghettos back at home. So collective liberation is the movement. Everything is love. Everything communal. It's humans being human. And look, I tell my people we got to stop paying debt to the West till our people fed and a unity form. 
and all the story that every African is free from the imperial core because we way past Black Lives Matter. We screaming Black liberation shut down AFRICOM right after because they flooding the communities with drugs and the hell. Then going to the continent and pillage all the wealth, locking all development and throw you in a cell. The suffering connected. We bonding over bondage. But how we start to heal, beginning with the unity and clarity that I ain't free to every African is free. Peace. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you. It means so much to me. Diana. I, okay, finally. I was trying to unmute, it, it wasn't working. Um, hello. I'm Diana Zwinnick, and I'm from Chicago, and uh, the po I only brought one poem to the party today. Um, the one I'm going to do is a poem that was inspired by the poem Field Trip to the Museum of Human History by Franny Choi, which is a poem that's basically about these children from a time in the future when all the things we take for granted, like handcuffs and and prisons and cruelty don't exist anymore. But this one is more introspective. Um, it's kind of like looking forward to being a great grandmother someday. And it's called, Tell Me Grandma. Tell me, Grandma, tell me again, what was it like? The day you saw the reports about the children caged on the border, how the people turned up and taunted the woman who worked for the president as she ate in a me Mexican restaurant. How the newscaster cried when she reported it. Tell me how the people weren't satisfied when family work camps were created to replace the tender age detention camps. How the people demanded that the borders be open to everyone looking for asylum from the conditions our country had created in their homelands. No, Grandma, tell me how the people's eyes were opened and they began to see how those people demanded that our country stop destroying their country and our name, how we discovered that the corporations had been hiding there all, all along, making money off misery. Tell me about the day they realized that there are no rules except the ones we agree to. No, Grandma, tell me about the days after the pandemic when the oil companies and food manufacturers doubled their prices saying that inflation was the cause. Tell me about how people did the math and said, you lie, and corporate greed and profiting from disaster was outlawed, and the greedy corporations were seized, and the people owned them instead. Oh, Grandma, Tell us about the time you went to fight the pipeline. Tell us about the people and the water cannons, the boy who lost his eye. Tell how the people, brave water protectors, prayed and prayed until the UN took up their case and how the world court punished those who violated their word, our word, that the indigenous world, or that the indigenous would have control over that land. Then they punished those people who began to kill us all. Talk about the day the land went back to those who were here before Columbus, the day the doctrine of discovery was erased, the day our first female president chose you to tell her story because the two of you stood together. Remind us that she was indigenous and how, by keeping its promises to the First Nations, this so-called this so-called nation was finally able to fulfill its promises to everyone. Tell me how you told the truth so that people could understand it. How you all rode up to the Capitol building on horseback, one million strong, the seventh generation demanding the land be returned to the people. Tell me about the eighth fire. Tell me how the poisoned water was healed. Tell me how the land was healed and how the human heart was healed. Tell me how we all learned to dance together, respecting each other's steps. Oh, grandmother, tell me about the eighth fire. That's that piece. Thank you. Y'all know you got missed yet on that one because I'm about to fucking cry. That was brilliant. Thank you. That was indeed amazing. And uh, I guess it's on me now. Uh, 
it's hard to do this at the end of the day when everybody has been so brilliant. But uh, the piece I've got is called Seed of Revolution. I think it sort of fits. Hello, my name is Lou. I'm an addict. I've been searching, chasing the perfect mango for 25 years. Obsessive, compulsive, mango maniac. From Mexico, each spring come Hayden mangoes, scarlet and yellow, golden, bountiful Ataulfo, Kent and later Ket, light green with orange flesh and the texture of fly. Then, with winter, brilliant ruby colored Tommy Atkins, the flavor of dry wood, all the way from Brazil, Peru, Ecuador. None of this lands in Chicago without a revolution in the economy. First, let's agree, an abundance of mangoes floods the markets year round, even if some are barely edible. Year round, even on the tropical rain-forested plantation streets of Chicago. Second, selling a box of Kents, seven or eight of them, each one weighs almost two pounds, for six bucks, give or take a buck, in spite of transportation costs. Did I mention that? That shipping from Mexico and points south demands a level of sophistication unprecedented. That cost demands the excruciating exploitation of labor, squeezed from the sweat of the mango plantation workers for the least possible price paid to those who suffer in peonage. In Puerto Rico and even Miami, you can reach out and pull them from heavy laden boughs in your backyard. But oil must flow freely to whisk mangoes to Chicago. And more, now burst the electronic transmission of information to automatic maintenance, to speed harvesting, pack the fruit, augment airplane technology, drive labor from the mango industry where workers remain, they compete to earn less than the cost of a silicon chip that's inside the robots everywhere. So here it is, my friends, within this six inch juicy sweet, sometimes with a hint of citrus flavor, hidden in the center of this nugget of nutrition, you'll find the seed of a revolution brewing under our eager palates, posing profound challenges, but incredible, and I do mean not to be believed, opportunities, possibilities, to solve the satisfaction of humanity, to protect the planet from despoliation, where transport workers, packers, and shippers, harvesters, and retailers, all workers on the road to replacement by revolutionary silicon, where art and artists, poets and musicians, cultivators of new ideas, have an historic chance to imagine and to build a new America a new world. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lou, Diana, and Nicholas. And now we have the inimitable Adam Gottlieb, poet, musician, and revolutionary from Chicago, taking us home. Adam. <laughs> wow, thank you, everyone. What a powerful day. Um, shout out to the folks who have been here since noon central or even earlier and so much gratitude to folks who are joining us from wherever you are in your busy days um, and in all the important cultural work and revolutionary work that people here are doing. It's truly, um, yeah, inspiring. Um, I'm inspired and I have the job of kind of bringing us home here. 
And all I'll say, because we're getting close to the hour and we want to respect folks' time, is that um, we chose the title Towards a Chorus of the People, Toward a Chorus of the People. Um, and we were really using our poet minds or artist brains more than our, you know, scientific, rational, um, materialist, uh, historical, uh, dialectic <laughs> uh, brains. Not to pose those two against each other, um, but uh, I mean, we were using both. But, uh, you know, this idea emerged collectively out of some of the writings that um, Sarah and um, Andrew and other comrades had done. And of course, Jack Hirschman, who we'll invoke again, um, who we wouldn't be doing this second year of this conference without him of blessed memory. Um, uh, but this metaphor of music, and particularly of a chorus of voices, is a powerful metaphor for the kind of uh, movement that we need to build in which everyone occupies a space of both uh, listening and speaking, you know, listening and uh, giving their own voice at the same time, which is what's necessary for a chorus to sound um, together and in harmony, right? And so that's my intention and spirit for these last uh, pieces. I have a short poem and a short song um, to close us out with. Um, uh, the song actually has two parts. We'll start uh, mellow and then we'll end on an up note, I promise. Um, uh, and even with some participation, um, kind of in the spirit of what Damon brought us to. And it seems I can share my screen. So I'm going to go ahead and share this um, poem. In my cultural work, I'm also a teacher and a teaching artist. And so the poetry workshop I've been teaching mostly revolves around this prompt to write a new anthem. And so here are some of my attempts toward a new anthem. Our new anthem after Eris Kian. In the age of streaming GoFundMes and the great so-called resignation, PUA, NFTs, and YouTube monetization, TikTok trends and endless wars, an apocalyptic phantom, if we need a revolution, we for sure need a new anthem. We need an anthem remixed from the fragments of our struggles from a sunrise over Occupy and the bills your sister juggles on a beat that samples voices lost in Ferguson, Missouri over war cries sung at Standing Rock full of all our tender fury and the rawness of snotty nose res kids and the earnestness of chance, the intensity of Saba and the beat to drive the dance of Calle Trece, not to mention the intelligence of No Name and the soul of our Jamila Woods, we who wrote rules to our own game cause the older one was so lame it couldn't lead us any further down the highway of our history, like a static frozen cursor. This new anthem has not been recorded, written, mixed, or mastered, but it's being sung on every tongue, making beauty of disaster. We the students, we the teachers, we the artists in the basements, we the poets, we the dancers, we the drummers, we the bassists, we the beat makers, the singers, the kids who color outside the lines, the self-employed content creators making the content of our times, we the hackers and the bloggers, the astrologers and nurses, we the workers and the unemployed, counting blessings, shouting curses. We the people come to cash our check and make the last the first. Our anthem will be sung in chorus in every single language, over every human rhythm, at every factory abandoned, every picket line and protest, every jail and tent encampment, till the day we take our world back and gather at the banquet. Then we'll stand for our new anthem with our hands upon our hearts, and we'll sing to together. Then at last, the true music will start. Damn, that's one of your best, Adam. Thank you, Monica. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so boldly we raise in our joyful rebellion whose broad spectrum of hue unafraid 
to unite Through our screams we all watched As we marched by the millions And the anthems we sang As the walls fell and clanged Gave proof through our fight that our freedom bell rang Oh, say does our rainbow Raise hands yet wave O'er the land we made free When we dare to live brave Staying on mute because we're on Zoom. You can repeat after me like we did with Damon. You can show me that you're singing along even if I can't hear you. Check it out in Spanish. Libera la tierra, la tierra. Libera mi gente, libera mi gente. Libera los pueblos, libera los pueblos. Libera la mente. Libera la mente, libera la tierra, libera la tierra, libera mi gente, libera los pueblos, libera los pueblos, libera la mente. All together now, libera la tierra, libera mi gente, libera. That's beautiful, dude. <laughs> Thank you. And the chorus was incredible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Lou, do you say oh, closing remarks? Is this it? Oh. This is it. This is it. We're we're done out of an absolutely amazing day. What can I say? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Jack you. Oh, is here. Thank yeah. you very much. Bye. Uh, good night. Uh, <laughs> hey. Good morning. I don't know. Solidarity. <laughs> so, buenas noches. <laughs>